Hello, everybody. Today starts section 4.3, and based on the title and what you see on this page, we see that we are moving into graphing on coordinate planes, graphing linear inequalities. Notice in big capital letters here, it says refresher. Well, not capital, bold, but the point is giant word here says refresher. So that means that this is knowledge we already have from last year, prior knowledge. We just need to bring it back. The best way to do that is to practice. We'll be practicing working with three types of given inequalities. Slope intercept, where y is already by itself, and we have mx plus b to work with. Standard form, which is our ax plus by, and then some constant, some number on the right. And then special cases, where it's just an x and a number, and y or an, and a number. Let's jump right into our practice. The first two are slope-intercept inequalities, meaning y is by itself, and we have mx plus b. So looking at number one, we have y is less than 2 fifths x minus 1. Strategy, identify m and b, plot b first, and then use the slope to count your way to the next point. At, at this stage, we're experts at that. So uh, I have m, identify m first. m is 2 fifths, b equals negative 1. B is my y-intercept. I will use that information first. Plot my y-intercept at negative 1. And then I use the slope to count my way. Positive 2 divided by a positive 5 means rise over run, vertical change over horizontal change, however you like to see it. Up 2, right 5. Up 1, 2, right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The opposite of up to right 5 would be coming back here and going down to left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To know what kind of line we draw, pay attention to the inequality sign. There is no or equal to part here, so I know that this is going to be a dotted line. If you do not have your ID easily accessible, those make great straight edges, um, you can make one, take a piece of scrap paper, fold it into fours, Find some kind of straight edge to make sure we're drawing a nice, neat, straight arrows on each end. Okay, I have my line. Now, the next part of this is to know which side of this to shade. To do that, we can do one of two things. We can check 0, 0. Let's start with that strategy. So, check... Zero, zero. The reason we choose zero, zero is one, our line does not go through zero, zero, so that makes it an okay point to use. If I get a true statement, it means this in where zero, zero is, which in this case is this side, this is my solution, any point on this side. If zero, zero comes out false, I don't shade this side, I shade this side. So let's see what happens. Where I see Y, I plug in zero. And where I see x, I plug in 0. And we're going to get. So this will be 0 is less than 0 minus 1. That comes out to be 0 less than negative 1. True or false? False. So that means shade the side 0, 0 is not on. No need to make this entire side a solid shade. That would be a waste of your pencil, okay? Nice, neat lines works just fine. A second strategy to know which side to shade is in bold here. Shade up or down the y-axis based on the inequality sign. What that means is, when I look at this inequality sign, it's less. Visually imagine taking this number line. We don't have left or right on this number line. We have up or down. Let me say that again. On the y-axis, there is no left and right. It's either up or down, which is why these are in quotes, up, down. Less than, reason, is less than up or is less than down? Less than is down. So that's how I know to shade underneath. 
If you like that reasoning, use it. If you're not sure and you're more comfortable checking a point, check a point. Number two says y is greater than or equal to 3 halves x plus 1. Again, this is mx plus b form. So the strategy is the same. We're going to identify m. And we're going to identify b here. m is 3 halves, and b is a positive 1. So we're going to graph our y-intercept first at 1. To count, this is a positive 3 divided by positive 2. So up 3, right 2. Up 1, 2, 3, right 2. I can't go up 3 and right 2 again, so I can come back to my b value and instead count the opposite. The opposite of up and right is down. Down, 1, 2, 3, left 2. To know if this should be a solid or dotted line, I look at my inequality sign, and there is an or equal to there. So we're going to take our straight edge, uh, use your ID or a piece of paper folded in fours, whatever works for you, but it needs to be a nice straight line using a straight edge ruler of some kind. Arrows on each end. I check. This is a positive slope. I have an increasing line. so. I am in good shape. Remember that you have two options on how to check a point. You can plug in 0, 0 because this line does not pass through 0, 0. Or you can do this shade up or down based on the sign. Checking 0, 0. That will become 0 is greater than or equal to 3 halves times 0 plus 1. So that's 0 greater than or equal to 0 plus 1. 0 greater than or equal to 1. Is 0 greater than or equal to 1? It is not. So this is false. So again, we are not going to shade the side that 0, 0 is on. So 0, 0 is right here. We shade the other side. The second way that we could have known how to shade without actually having to do this math, it says y is greater than or equal to. So ask yourself, is greater on the up, going up, or going down. Greater is up, so I shade this side. There are two U tries next, so please come down here to the U tries and press pause and try both of these completely by yourself. And when you're ready, check answers with me. So I see that y is by itself. This is an mx plus b inequality. m is negative 2 thirds, and b is negative 2. I use this piece of information first, so I go to negative 2 on the y-axis, and I plot my y-intercept. For a set of directions, negative 2 divided by 3 means down 2, right 3. So I go down 1, 2, right 1, 2, 3. I can do it again, down 2, right 1, 2, 3. I could also come back here and do the opposite. So the opposite of down and right is up, one, two, left, one, two, three. That's enough points. Don't need any more than that. To know whether this should be a dotted or solid line, this is strictly a greater than. I don't see an or equal to part. So I know that this will be a dotted line. A quick mental check, this is a negative slope. From left to right, this is a decreasing line, so I know I'm in good shape. 
If you chose to check zero, zero, that would look like zero greater than negative two thirds times zero minus two. We end up with zero greater than negative two. Is that true or false? Zero is greater than negative two, that's true. So that means we will shade the side that zero, zero is on. Zero, zero is on this side, it's on this half. Remember, to save your pencil, don't shade this whole thing in so dark that the entire thing is filled in, it's a waste of pencil. Just get some neat lines like that. Keep it neat, please don't squiggle. If you chose to not check zero, zero and just pay attention to the inequality sign, this says y is greater than. So greater would be in the upwards direction in the upper half, so I shaded this half above. Number four, y is less than or equal to negative x minus four. m equals negative one, b is negative four. I use this piece of information first. Negative 1 as a fraction is negative 1 divided by 1, down 1, right 1. So down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, back up here. The opposite of down and right is up and left. You can do that a couple times. This says or equal to, so I know it will be a solid line. If you chose to check zero, zero, that would look like zero less than or equal to negative zero minus four. Zero less than or equal to negative four. True or false, is zero less than or equal to negative four? Definitely not, false. So I go to where zero, zero is. This is a false point, does not work. So if this point is not a solution, none of the points on this side are a solution, which means the other half is the solution. If I were to just use the inequality sign to know how to shade, y is less than or equal to, is less than up or underneath, down, heading down. Less than is on this side this direction of the y-axis, so I shade this half underneath. Moving on to our second type of inequality, a standard form inequality. A little more work is involved here because if I notice, this is not solved for y. A strategy though, instead of trying to solve these for y, let's do quick graphs by intercepts. So let's recall how to graph by intercepts. I'm going to put a title here that I really want you to use, okay? So for the x-intercept, I'll abbreviate that as x-int, let y equal zero. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we're gonna do. What we just wrote is what we're gonna do. To find the x-intercept, let y equal zero. So this will become four x, minus three times zero. For the sake of finding the intercept, we're not gonna have an inequality anymore, it's gonna to switch to an equal sign, because we're actually gonna calculate a point. Anything times zero is zero. So this becomes four x equals three. And I don't think Oh, I see what happened. All right, so in your notes, guys, there's a typo on here that we were supposed to change and I forgot. Please make the three a 12. Okay, now let's keep going. To finish solving, four X equals 12, we're gonna divide both sides by four. x equals 
3. So our x-intercept is at 3. As an ordered pair, you found x is 3, and the y value was 0, so 3 comma 0. To find the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So that's our other little title, y int, int for intercept, let x equal 0. So that will be 4 times 0 minus 3y equals 12. This will be negative 3y equals 12. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. y equals negative 4. So my y-intercept is at negative 4. As an ordered pair, you let x be 0, so 0, and then you calculated negative 4. This is an or equal to, so I know that that will be a solid line. Now, this is not solved for y. We can't use a shortcut. To know which side to shade, we have to check 0, 0. So for standard form inequalities, we can use quick graphs by intercepts, but to know how to shade, we definitely have to check a point. Zero, zero is an option because the line does not pass through it. So let's check zero, zero. Four times zero minus three times zero, less than or equal to 12. Zero, less than or equal to 12. True or false? True. So we shade the side that 0, 0 is on. 0, 0 is here, which makes this entire side my solutions. Any single ordered pair on this side works. Number six, process does not change. Quick graphs by intercepts. So x-intercept, let y equal 0. To find the x-intercept, what do you do? Do what you just wrote, let y equal 0. So x minus 4 times 0. Remember, the inequality switches to an equal for this because we're actually going to calculate a value. Interesting, we get x equals 0. So the x-intercept is 0, 0. To find the y-intercept, let x equal 0. So 0 minus 4 times 0 equals 0. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Ah, we get 0 again. Special case, special case, line goes through zero, zero. So in this instance, we chose to put this in the notes for a reason, because sometimes this does happen. If your line goes through zero, zero, Graphing by intercepts is no longer an option. So we are actually going to have to solve this for y. It's quick, though. We'll subtract x from both sides. To finish solving for y, what do we need to do? Well, this says negative 4 times y. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. Check it out. We're dividing by a negative, so this becomes y is greater than or equal to 1 fourth x. 
So the slope of the line is a positive one-fourth. We'll come back here, and from our, our B value, which is zero, right, one-fourth X plus zero, we'll count up one, right, one, two, three, four, or we could go down one, left, one, two, three, four. There is an or equal to, so this is a solid line. So most times, being able to graph by intercepts will work, but it's important to realize that if your line passes through zero, zero, graphing by intercepts will not work, and you do need to actually calculate for y. <clears throat> to know how to shade, I can't test zero, zero because the line goes through zero, zero. So we need to pick some other point. Let's check three, zero, right? Why not? We can choose any point we want. You could choose zero, four. We just have to choose a point. So for me, I choose three comma zero. So check three, zero. So here's X, here's Y. So this would become three minus four times zero, less than or equal to zero, that's gone. Is three less than or equal to zero? False. So if three comma zero fails, every single ordered pair on this side would fail. I shade the other side. And I'm done. There are two for you to try. Go for it. Graph by intercept. Press pause and then check answers with me when you're done. X intercept. Let Y equal zero. So let's let Y equal zero. X plus zero greater than negative one. This one is easy because this is gone. Ah, I did what I told you not to do. Change this into an equation, guys. So X plus zero, that's an X, equals negative one. Okay, there we go. So X equals negative one. To find the y intercept, let x equal zero. So y int, let x equal zero. So this will become zero plus y equals negative one. So my y intercept is at negative one. You let x be zero, so zero comma, and then you found y is negative one. There's my ordered pair. There is no or equal to, so this will be a dashed line, dotted line. Make it neat. Zero, zero is an option. My line does not go through that point. So let's check. Zero, zero to know how to shade. That would become zero plus zero is greater than negative one. The statement is zero is greater than negative one. Is that true? Yes, zero is bigger than negative one. True. So we shade that side. Number eight, we have a standard form inequality. Process does not change. X intercept, let Y equal zero. That'll be five X plus two times zero equals 10. Five X equals 10, divide by five, divide by five, X equals two. So that will be two comma zero. My x-intercept is at two. For the y-intercept, 
let x equal 0. So that'll be 5 times 0 plus 2y equals 10. That's gone. 2y equals 10. Divide by 2. y equals 5. So x is 0, y is 5, 0, comma 5. The y-intercept is at 5. There is no or equal to. It's strictly a greater than. So this is a dotted line, dashed line. To know how to shade, let's check 0, 0. That's 5 times 0 plus 2 times 0 greater than 10. We get 0 greater than 10. True or false? 0 is definitely not bigger than 10. So if 0, 0 is false, no ordered pair on this side will work. I shade the other side. Last set of examples deals with special case inequalities, where it's just x and a number. So for example, this says y is greater than or equal to 2. This just says x less than or equal to 2. The strategy here is to recognize that <clears throat> y less than a number or greater than is the same as 0x plus that number. What we mean by that is that this is the same as y is greater than or equal to 0x plus 2. It's giving you the y-intercept. So for this one, b is 2, right? mx plus b. My b value is 2. The slope is 0. Prior knowledge, a slope of 0 is a horizontal line. Let's see if I can move that down. Horizontal line going through 2 on the y-axis. That's it. That's all you do to graph. To know how to check, you're still using that concept of checking a point. But if I say check 0, 0, you really only have a y value to plug in for, right? So really, you're just checking y is 0. So is 0 greater than or equal to 2? False. So 0, 0 fails. I shade the other side. Because y is by itself, you technically could have used the sign to tell you y is greater than or equal to. So greater is up the upwards direction. So anything that has y in a number will always be a horizontal line. Let's go over here and remember what we know about if it's x and a number. So in the notes, you'd start reading right here. You're going to go to the x-axis and draw a vertical line. So here, I see x is less than or equal to 2. I'm going to go to 2 on the x-axis. This is an or equal to, again, so it's um, a solid line. You're drawing a vertical line through that point. Again, in theory, you could check 0, 0. But this time, if I look, I only really have x. There's no y to plug in for. So you're saying, is 0 less than or equal to 2? That is true. So I shade the side of the line that 0, 0 is on. You try these two. When you're done with 10, go try the two you tries, and that's going to wrap up our notes for today. Give these a shot. Press pause and try them. X 
is greater than negative three, I'm gonna go to negative three on the x-axis. It's strictly greater than, so I'm going to draw a dashed line, a dashed vertical line with arrows on both ends. When I check zero, zero, I'm really only checking the x value of zero since there's no y in this equation. So is zero greater than negative three? It's true. So I shade the side that zero, zero is on. For 12, y is less than negative 2. I go to negative 2 on the y-axis. It's strictly a less than. I don't see an or equal to. I draw a solid horizontal line through that point. Arrows on both ends. Here, we are dealing with y, so y is less than. Less than is downwards. I shade underneath. Or you could check that 0, 0 point. And we're done. Nice job. So the back page are the four homework questions that, or excuse me, six homework questions you could choose to work on now or save them for class tomorrow. But the notes end with number 12. Good job, and I will see you tomorrow.